stay connected on social media. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And make a point to check in with someone this week. Let them know that you were thinking about them. St. Paul remembers our saints in eternal rest. Sister Shirley Sims and Sister Ruby Powell, please continue to pray for their families. The family of Sean Allen Williams writes, We would like to gratefully and sincerely express our appreciation to Pastor Ephraim Williams and the St. Paul Baptist Church for the many expressions of sympathy shown to us during this time of bereavement. Your act of love and kindness will never be forgotten. Please continue to keep us in your prayers. In the event of an illness or death, please call the church at 916-737-7070, extension 216. Next Sunday on June 7th, St. Paul will partake in communion as we celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please have water or juice to represent the shedding of His blood and bread or crackers to represent His body. Dr. Williams would like to thank everyone for their expressions of kindness and thoughtfulness as he celebrated his 49th year as pastor of St. Paul Baptist Church. The Celebration of Excellence program is now virtual. Join us on June 7th at 10 a.m. as we celebrate the graduating class of 2020. We're transitioning. Don't miss this eight-week Bible study series with Pastor Kenneth Reese. Wednesdays at 12 noon and 7 p.m. Visit www.stpaulsac.org for more details. Join us as we begin a video series to assist you in dealing with the coronavirus. Operation COVID-19, Becoming Equipped and Ready for What's Ahead, airs on Thursday, June 4, 2020 at 7 p.m. The first segment will be Financial Tips and the Coronavirus. Visit stpaulsac.org for more details. We have five ways to give. You can give online by visiting our website and clicking the word give. You can text to give by texting the word give to the number below. You may drop off your offering at the Family Life Center. We're open from Tuesday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. You may drop off your offering in the mail slot located at the Church Administration Office at 3996 14th Avenue. Lastly, you may mail in your offering to the Finance Department. If you would like an offering envelope mailed to you, please call the church and we'll be happy to accommodate you. Remember, you can help fight this virus. Wash your hands often, don't touch your face, practice safe social distancing, and stay home. God bless you, stay safe, stay healthy, and most of all, stay prayed up. Good morning and welcome to St. Paul Baptist Church Online. We are so delighted that you have chosen to join us this morning. So please invite your family and your friends to join us today in worship. At this time, we should have our scripture reading. Meet me at Psalms 112, verses 1 and 2. Praise you the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of upright shall be blessed. Good morning, St. Paul, family and friends. I'm here today to share a Bible verse with you. Psalms 46 and 1. I'm here with my granddaughter. Name's April. And my name is Sister Bonner. So right now, let me read the verse for you. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present, helping in trouble. 
So this verse means a lot to me because of what things, the things that are going on right now with the COVID-19. We're staying at home and we have a lot going on and want to go outside and have some fun. Just letting you know that God is there for us always to protect us. So just help your parents around the house at home because they can be stressful too. Staying at home, some may have jobs and some may have lost their jobs and some is working at home like I am. And it is stressful, but what we can do to help each other is to kids help your parents at home. And what else can you do to help your parents? Um, you got to help your parents because they're your parents. Okay, would you help clean up your room? Yes, okay. Well, help clean up your room, wash some dishes, and just to let you know, God is there for us, and He is looking out for us, and He's bringing us all together to be together, that we can sit at the table and eat dinner with each other instead of using our cell phones. So, we love you. And we want to pray that everything will be okay. Please pray for our pastor, Pastor Ephraim Williams, and pray for Pastor Reese that's coming up. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. My, I, I, my soul.
Good morning, St. Paul family, members, and friends. First, give honor to God for giving me strength and courage to speak to you today. Next, I'd like to thank Pastor Williams for giving me this opportunity to come before you as the mission speaker of this fifth Sunday, and I'll title it Better. After I was notified, I sat and I thought about what I wanted to say. Many thoughts went through my mind. I prayed and I asked God to speak to my heart and to tell me what he wanted me to say. I trusted God for the answer. I kept hearing the word better. When I pray, it always makes things better. Philippians chapter four, verse 13 reminds me that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I thought about how missionary and evangelism work. It first began with Jesus and his disciples. They were led by the Holy Spirit to preach, teach, and to win others to Christ. I think about the church and the choir's mission statements also. I even think about Sister Evelyn Kennedy ever so sweetly telling me years ago that she wanted me to help with some mission work for the church. She explained to me what she wanted me to do, and I realized that it had something to do with helping someone and blessing someone. And I also realized that it will put a smile on someone's face and it will put a smile on my face as well. So I gladly accepted her invitation and it was done to make one's life better. Acts chapter one, verse eight tells us that as Christians, we have to, we have a responsibility to be witnesses. One might say, uh-oh, yes, we are to share the good news, just like Jesus and his disciples did. While witnessing, one might ask, well, how much is it gonna cost me? Well, the simple truth is, it doesn't cost a dime, not one thin dime. We are to share the good news of Jesus, that Jesus died for our sins so that we could be forgiven for all of our sins and spend eternity with God in heaven. One of the best examples of evangelism is how we work with people in our daily lives. Some people can quote scriptures just like that. I can't do that. But the question is, are their lives lining up with what they are saying and teaching? What about how you work in your ministries? What about your jobs? Can others see Christ in you or see something different about you? What about in your homes? Can your family members and friends see God's light shining through you? Do you treat others with respect? If you are not living a Christian life, how are you going to minister to someone or lead others to Christ? Remember, someone is always watching you. How are you feeling when you go out and witness to others? Is your life not in order with God's? Well, if it's not, while you're out there witnessing to others, it might be a message somewhere in it for you that you haven't even realized yet. If you feel like you've gotten off track, you might want to ask yourself these questions. Are you praying? Are you reading God's word? Are you actually spending quality time with God and meditating on his word? Are you understanding his word and asking God for clarification and wisdom? When I worked at Sutter Hospital, I would often call the church to ask them if there were any patients there that I can go visit. Once I got that information, I would pray. I would pray for each person that I was gonna visit. And then I went to visit them. But then before I went into the room, I would check with the nurse who was taking care of that patient to ask them how the patient was doing and if it was okay for me to visit. Once in there, I would always pray for that person and I would give them a card and some would welcome a scripture. So I did whatever I could to encourage them. I would ask them if they needed anything or if I can do anything for them. And before I returned to my area where I worked, 
I would go back to the nurse's station to let them know that I was leaving, but that I would be checking on the nurses to make sure that our church member was being well taken care of. When it comes to meeting God's holy standards for our lives, we have all fallen short. No one is perfect. But when I think about Jesus dying on the cross to pay the price for my sins, it brings tears to my eyes, knowing that he took the consequences of death upon himself so that you and I didn't have to die for our sins. That's what he did for me and he did it for you. You better recognize why you still have time. Once we put our trust in God and invite him to be the Lord and savior of our lives, we are saved. This means that we have a relationship with God and that we can trust him to help us with whatever we need help with. If one chooses not to do this, you would be separated from God's goodness. With everything that's going on in the world today, I encourage you to not let the cares of this world get you down because we have someone we can lean on and someone we can depend on and trust. God always makes things better. Continue to stay in God's word and meditate on God's word because God's word is medicine. Before I go to sleep at night, I pray and I take some of God's medicine, which is God's word. When I wake up in the morning, I pray again and I take some more of God's medicine. Then I take some more and some more and some more because I know I can't overdose on it. It only makes me better. I believe that while we're in this pandemic, now is a good time for us to think about these four things. Reflect, refocus, reset, relationship. We need to reflect on the things God has done for us over the years and what he is still doing for us. Refocus. We need to refocus our minds on the word of God and evaluate where we are in our lives today. Reset. We need to reset our schedules and our lives so that we can spend more time with God and be a witness. You can even help somebody, pray for somebody, call somebody to check on them and ask them how they're doing or if they need anything. Relationship. We need to have a closer relationship with God. Determine whether your relationship with God is just natural or spiritual. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 says, the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can we know them because they are spiritually discerned. But the spiritual man has the mind of Christ. In closing, I would like to say that when I was in the fourth grade, we used to sing this song and it says, Lord, I want to be a Christian in a my heart, in a my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in a my heart. The other verses say, Lord, I want to be more loving in a my heart, in a my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in a my heart. I taught this song to our alert girls class and one of the students asked me, why did I look like I was crying? I told her that it was because the song really touched my heart then and it still touches my heart today. Now that I'm older, I say, Lord, I want to be a better Christian in a my heart, in a my heart. Lord, please help me to be a better Christian in a my heart. So let your light shine so that others can see the reflection of God in you. Thank you. Together, let's have prayer. Father, we thank you for who you are. Even in the midst of this Nordstrom pestilence, we know that you are in full control. Lord, be the God that you are. You are a deliverer. You are our God. You're the true lover of our soul. And we trust in you, even in the midst of this Nordstrom pestilence. We love you, Lord, and for you are our Savior and our rock. 
In Christ's name we pray, amen. Good morning. Please bow with me in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you for this morning, Lord. Thank you for all of the people that are listening. Master, they want to hear a word from you. So Lord, please speak as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Today we want to share a message of hope. And it's my desire that the Lord touches your heart right where you are on this morning. If you have your Bibles, please turn to 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 14. And it reads, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering, that when his glory is revealed, ye may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. And on today's message, we want to deal with the topic, hope in the midst of crisis. Hope in the midst of a crisis. The book of 1 Peter helps us to deal with the situation that we all are facing right now. It's a book of trials. It's a book of challenges. Uh, Christians that are going through something. In Peter's day, he had to deal with persecution. He had to deal with this new movement of the way. And there were many people who didn't understand what this message of hope was about. But Peter explains to us that we should not be frightful. We shouldn't walk around as though we as Christians would never face any challenges. Challenges are a part of this Christian walk. It's embedded in our DNA. Whenever we wake up, it's an opportunity for God to use us to go through some challenges. And also I would like for you to read the book of Acts when you have an opportunity. That's Acts chapter three, as well as Acts chapter four. And in Acts chapter three, we are faced or we are exposed to a narrative dealing with Peter and John. And many of you know this story, Peter and John, uh, they're going up to the temple to pray. And on this journey, they encountered a man who had been lame at least 40 years. And it was the ritual for this man to get people to help him uh, to sit in his place so he can beg alms of those that were going to the temple. And on this occasion, it's interesting, uh, this man didn't wake up knowing what God had in mind for him. He didn't wake up knowing that this day was going to be his day for an opportunity to get to know the creator of the universe. This man didn't wake up knowing what the day had in store for him. So he approached Peter and John as they were on their way to go worship. And Peter and John responded to this man. He wanted silver and gold, but Peter and John gave him what he needed, and that was the gospel. And in sharing the gospel with this man, while reaching out to his knees, the Lord supernaturally, through uh, the apostle, healed this man of his illness. And this man who had been lame for at least 40 years was finally able to walk. And I'm talking about hope in the midst of a crisis. When this man was healed by the apostle, the religious leaders took note. The word had gone forth that this man who many knew as the beggar 
who sat at the gate beautiful, who always begged people for something, this man had been healed, not just physically, but he had been touched spiritually. And the word had gone out that the individuals who healed this man was Peter and John. And as Peter and John were sharing the gospel and doing what the Lord had them to do, they received an audience. Some interested religious leaders were there to observe uh, Peter and John and his team. Who are these individuals that healed this beggar? We have to see it for ourselves. And in them reaching out to this beggar, instead of the religious leaders rejoicing and thanking God for this miracle, they were offended. They were offended, number one, because uh, this word had gone out that this man had been healed and uh, they were preaching that Jesus was king, that Jesus was Lord. And they didn't want to mess up their relationship with the Roman government. Because things were status quo, they had an agreement. You practice your religion, but don't trouble the waters as it relates to the Roman position. Number two, they were offended, especially the Sadducees because the Sadducees did not believe in the physical resurrection which the apostles were preaching. This Jesus that was crucified physically rose on the third day. And as a result of him raising up, now the apostles as well as their followers of, of the way, those who follow Jesus, they too have access to supernatural powers. And as a result of God being who he is, the apostles did not retreat. The apostles did not shrink. The apostles had hope in the midst of crisis. Because of them healing this man, the officials seized them, put him in jail. They had to stay overnight. And as they were in jail, the religious leaders conferred upon themselves. What should we do with this group? What should we do? Because the word is out. The word is out that uh, they performed this great miracle. But to their credit, the apostles did not take the credit for themselves. They pointed the miracle back to God. And that's what we need to do today. We need to tell others that we're making it through this pandemic occasion, not because of us, but because of God. That we're here, uh, lights are on, mortgage being paid, school tuition being paid, roof over our head, food to, food to eat, not because of the charity programs that this city is offering, not because uh, we're so good, not because we have tenure at our job, but it's because of the grace of God that we have what we have. So we need to testify. And regardless of the crisis, regardless of what the Roman government was going to do, regardless of what the religious officials were going to, going to do, the apostles were not going to stop giving God the praise and the honor that's due him. So from this narrative, there are three aspects in chapter four of the book of Acts that I want us to consider. Number one, we find the persecution. Number two, we find the prayer. And then thirdly, we find the plan. So in terms of the persecution, again, Paul reminds us that, uh, or rather Peter reminds us that we as Christians will have to endure hardship. 
Sometimes we are the instigators of the hardship due to our disobedience, and other times, through no fault of our own, issues, stress, pandemics come upon us. But regardless of whatever we're going through, God is still there. He is the constant plumb line. And we, through persecution, must look at this light from a Christian worldview. Perhaps you're going through stress right now. You don't know if you're going to get another paycheck. Perhaps uh, you're not sure if your job is going to keep you on. Perhaps uh, you can't see your doctor as you would like to. You can't have the surgery as you want to. Perhaps you're just losing it because you can't come to the church building. Regardless of your stress, I'm here to tell you that God sees it. God sees you. He loves you. And he has it all under control. The apostles were able to have peace that surpassed all understanding because they knew God. They knew the power of God. They knew that God sees everything. And because of that, they had the hope in the midst of crisis. They were able to be a witness to others because of their temperament. They didn't run out run, uh, worrying about how long are we going to be in jail. We don't find that in the story. They weren't having a pity party. They were bold and confident. How can these unlearned men who never went to a university speak with such authority and courage? Because they knew God. God gave them hope in the midst of a crisis. And that's what we need to do today. We don't need to fret. We don't need to stress. We just need to lean in the arms of God. We need to remember all the things that he's done for us. And many of us have testimonies of how God delivered us in years past. Rely on that testimony. Rely on what he's done for you. And in due time, this too shall pass. Martin Luther faced the same thing. During the time of the Reformation, there was the Black Plague. And Martin Luther also had to endure the crisis that we're facing. Many people passed away due to the Black Plague. But Martin Luther was steadfast in his belief that God sees everything and he's working everything out. God has seen it before and he's going to work it out again to our advantage. Then the second portion deals with the prayer. After they were released from the jail, they immediately went back to the church. Now, when I say the church, I'm not talking about a church building. They went to the church, meaning the body of believers. We are the church. They went to prayer at the church. Some people are losing it because they can't physically come to this church building. Well, we are God's building. Where we go, the church go. I am so excited when I hear about Christians continuing to do work in the midst of this pandemic. But if we're going to do, or if we're going to be where God wants us to be, we have to pray. And there's nothing like talking to God. That's what prayer is. If you are fearful, talk to God. If you are in despair, talk to God. If you need answers, talk to God. If you need direction, talk to God. Whatever you need, we need to talk to God. And we'll find ourselves worshiping him in spirit and in truth. And you might even find yourself singing a few bars like, he's sweet, I know. He's sweet, I know. Storm clouds 
They may rise, strong winds may blow, but I'll tell the world wherever I go that I found a sa Savior and He's sweet, I know. And if you sing that long enough, you'll find yourself, not stressing anymore, you'll find yourself being lifted beyond what you came in with. When we have prayer service, we're talking to God. We are releasing all of our burdens and giving it to him. We talk to him because only he can answer our prayers. Only he can tell us what we need to do. Only he can give us the truth dipped in love. And that's what the apostles did. They had a prayer service. They didn't go out and ask other people what we need to do. They came to testify. This is what the Lord has done for me. And we all need to do the same thing. We need to talk to God and we need to worship him. We need to adore him. We need to magnify his holy name. We, we need to give him the credit for everything he's done up to this point. We could be the ones in the hospital. And if we are in the hospital, he's the chief physician. He can heal you directly or he can heal you through the doctors. So we pray to God. We adore him, we magnify him, we tell him how great he is, and in doing so, we get an opportunity to feel his presence. We get an opportunity to know him more intimately. So during the midst of a crisis, we receive hope through persecution. We receive hope through the ability to pray to God. Then lastly, when we're able to talk to God, God gives us a plan. And his plan is always the best plan. I get so excited hearing about all the things that some of you all are doing during this crisis. Jesus told us that we need to look at our neighbors. We, we, we always look uh, to help those that are around us. We need to take care of the widow and we need to take care of those that are sick. Jesus commands us to do these things, to be a good neighbor. And I'm hearing such good testimonies about what the church is doing. Just because we can't make it to this church building doesn't mean that church business stops. God has a plan. God has a plan even in the midst of this crisis. There is hope. There is hope in the midst of this crisis, not just for us, but for other people. And we always talk about how God has blessed us. Well, this is an opportunity, church, for us to bless others. You can't walk, but you can use your hand and pick up the telephone and call someone. You may not have a, a boat full of money, but whatever litter you have, maybe you can get some cans and, and share with your neighbor that doesn't have any food. God has a plan. Just like he saw the early Christians through their storms, God is going to see us through. I'm confident that God is going to see us through. Why? Because he's Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. And I know him as a provider. Whenever I needed something, God has always been there to take care of us. God will be there to take care of you. And the question is, will you trust him in the midst of this crisis? Trust him in the midst of this pandemic. There is hope. There's hope for you. There's hope for others. And this hope can only come from Jesus the Christ. The one who came, died, buried for our sins. But the good news is on the third day he rose. He rose so that I could have life and have it more abundantly. He rose so I could overcome my isms, my racism and my sexism and uh, whatever isms you have. God rose that we may have power to overcome 
whatever we need to overcome. But don't wait till the battle is over. You can shout right now because we have the victory and we have the hope in the midst of a crisis. I hope you got something out of this message. May God be with you and your family. Remember to talk to God and to reach out to other people. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can simply invite him into your heart right now. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died and rose from my sins on the third day. Lord Jesus, I accept you as both Lord and Savior. Come into my heart today in Jesus' name. You can say that sinner's prayer, and the Lord will receive you and meet you right where you are. Again, be blessed, and we pray that you got something out of this message. Amen. Stay connected on social media. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And make a point to check in with someone this week. Let them know that you were thinking about them. St. Paul remembers our saints in eternal rest. Sister Shirley Sims and Sister Ruby Powell, please continue to pray for their families. The family of Sean Allen Williams writes, We would like to gratefully and sincerely express our appreciation to Pastor Ephraim Williams and the St. Paul Baptist Church for the many expressions of sympathy shown to us during this time of bereavement. Your act of love and kindness will never be forgotten. Please continue to keep us in your prayers. In the event of an illness or death, please call the church at 916-737-7070, extension 216. Next Sunday on June 7th, St. Paul will partake in communion as we celebrate the death of burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please have water or juice to represent the shedding of His blood, and bread or crackers to represent His body. Dr. Williams would like to thank everyone for their expressions of kindness and thoughtfulness as he celebrated his 49th year as pastor of St. Paul Baptist Church. The Celebration of Excellence program is now virtual. Join us on June 7th at 10 a.m. as we celebrate the graduating class of 2020. We're transitioning. Don't miss this eight-week Bible study series with Pastor Kenneth Reese, Wednesdays at 12 noon and 7 p.m. Visit www.stpaulsac.org for more details. Join us as we begin a video series to assist you in dealing with the coronavirus. Operation COVID-19 Becoming Equipped and Ready for What's Ahead airs on Thursday, June 4th, 2020 at 7 p.m. The first segment will be Financial Tips and the Coronavirus. Visit stpaulsac.org for more details. We have five ways to give. You can give online by visiting our website and clicking the word GIVE. You can text to give by texting the word give to the number below. You may drop off your offering at the Family Life Center. We're open from Tuesday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. You may drop off your offering in the mail slot located at the Church Administration Office at 3996 14th Avenue. Lastly, you may mail in your offering to the Finance Department if you would like an offering envelope mailed to you, please call the church and we'll be happy to accommodate you. Remember, you can help fight this virus. Wash your hands often, don't touch your face, practice safe social distancing, and stay home. God bless you, stay safe, stay healthy, and most of all, stay prayed up.